name is Shannon and I am with Pick and Boost Vintage in Fort Myers, Florida. Thank you for joining me on the Dixie Bell page. Um, tonight we're going to have a little bit of fun. We are going to take this boring old linoleum floor and we're going to make it pretty. Okay, so like I said, I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. Let me know where you're from. Type it in the comments. I'd love to hear. Okay, so first we need to talk about what you need to do to prep the floor before you can paint it. What I recommend is a white lightning. You're going to simply use a little bit of this, clean your floor. After the floor is clean, you're going to rinse it off with water just to make sure you get rid of the residue so the paint and everything will adhere to the floor. Okay. Now, I have two painted tiles here. Now they're kind of bland because they kind of match the already linoleum color, but I want to show you something here. Chalk paint generally sticks to everything, but this square here, I just simply put some chalk paint on it, the Dixie Bell, and when I go like this, it scratches right off. So it goes right into my fingernails. That's not good, you don't want that. So, the square next to it, what I did, was I used a little helper. It's called Slick Stick. This is a, um, a miracle worker. It'll help the chalk mineral paint stick to anything that's shiny or like laminate, glass, whatever. So, I applied the Slick Stick and then put the paint over it, and guess what? It's not scratching off into my fingernails like the one that did not receive the slick stick. Okay, so slick stick is is bomb.com. <laughs> okay. Next. What I did was I have it in little stations because I want to be able to take you from 0 to 100. <laughs> so, let me show you how easy Slick stick is to apply. I've already cleaned my surface. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right. Whew. Use my brush. And you simply apply it to your clean floor. Now with Slick Stick, you need two coats. You're going to put the first coat on, let it dry two to three hours, and then you'll put your second coat on and let it dry overnight. So I'm just going to demonstrate really quick how easy it is to apply the Slick Stick. Slick stick has a little bit of an odor, but nothing, nothing really that bad. All right. So there you will have it. There's slick stick. This is a must if you're going to paint linoleum or even tile. Now we're moving on to our second step. Put this to the side. Okay, so I have this area already pre-slick pre sticked. Slicked. What I'm painting is actually is a kitchen floor of my shop. Um, we're going to be having a bunch of classes. We have so many scheduled. We're hoping that uh, we're just going to have so many people come and show up and do all our classes. But anyway, we... Um, need to update this floor because it's pretty dirty and disgusting. Linoleum is pretty old and after a while it gets just gritty and grimy and uh, just disgusting. So we're going to paint over it. Since I only rent the building, I don't want to invest all the money in putting new flooring in. So what I did was I just simply took some old Dixie Belle colors, just a bunch of paint that I have half jars laying around. Put them all, put a little bit of water in them, and then I, 
mixed in a tub, and I came up with a color. Not too bad. I didn't use any of the darks like the black or the caviar or any of uh, like Bunker Hill Blue. I just tried to stay with more of the neutrals. Now my floor is already slick stick so I'm ready to paint. I bring this a little closer. What's nice about this is it just goes on. Look at that. I'm not quite sure how well you can see this, but it is going on super easy. Got great coverage. Yes, I'm hand painting it. I'm a big brush component. I don't like to roll. I prefer to brush it. I am using my mini brush. The mini brush is my favorite for um, flat surfaces. I did get a little bit up here. I should have a red. I'll just take some cotton to that later and paint it white. Okay, so. Nice strokes. I'm just giving you a little tutorial on how easy this paint goes on. Such good coverage. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. I have uh, one of my girlfriends here. She's kind of monitoring it, and she'll let me know if you have a question. The paint just goes on super easy. It's got great coverage. And having a slick stick underneath will make sure that the paint adheres for a very long time. Probably longer than I'll be in the building. <laughs> it's amazing what a little bit of paint will do. And since I'm using all my leftover paints, it's not costing me a lot to do this either. Okay, so you get the general idea. I've painted these squares here. You can see the great coverage that we're getting here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side. I don't want to bore you too much with painting the rest of this. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to an area that I already have painted. Gonna move these out of the way. Oh, hi from Texas! Wow. All right. So I'm revealing more of my area. Now this is where the fun is going to begin. I could just leave it simply painted this color, but no fun. So what I'm gonna do is I have this stamp here, and I'm going to show you how to use this stamp, using the Dixieville paint, to make this floor have a little bit of character. I'm going to use some fluff. I chose to use fluff because the cotton is really, really bright white, and the fluff is not as bright. So, pour some out here. This is super easy to do. I just have a regular roll brush. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on here. I'm going to lay my stamp down. And I'm going to roll it with some of the Dixie Belle fluff. And it is amazing. you've probably already figured out. I'm going to line it up. Oops. You press 
on it. The nice thing is it doesn't have to be perfect. And then voila. I'm going to do a couple more of these. I'm going to put it back in my cardboard because when I roll, sometimes the paint splatters just a bit. I want to know what company made the stamp. Oh, this is um, Ironwork and Designs. This is Cubana. I have seen where people have used this stamp and instead of just using one color, in some of the decorative parts they've used two or three colors so it looks really oops, I feel crooked. Um, looks really uh, modern. I've seen where they've taken, had maybe white on the outside and they put some blue in the middle. It looked really neat. But this is just in the classroom, so there's going to be lots of feet on it, and not many people are going to see it. Now, had I been doing this in my, uh, my laundry room, I might do a few colors. This back. I have this cloth there because I'm trying to hide the floor that's behind me that's already finished. All right, so I'm going to stick this on here. What's nice about this stamp is you simply just line it up. <laughs> and it's pretty straight. Now it's not designed to be perfect. It does have a little bit of vintage wear to it, like distressing, which is perfect. <laughs> okay, for those of you that may be just tuning in, my name is Shannon, and I'm with Pick and Boost Vintage. I'm in Fort Myers, Florida. I've been a Dixie Belle rep for about two years. I've been using chalk mineral paint, gosh, since 2012. But once I found Dixie Belle, I fell in love, and that's been it. Okay, I'm going to do a few more just to show you. It's amazing what a little paint will do to transform a room. If you're on a budget, this is a great way to redesign your room and save money. Ta-da! How's it looking so far? Okay, I'm going to do a few more. Now, it's very key when you are painting with the linoleum or even on tile or any kind of slick surface that you do use the slick stick. It is a miracle worker. It'll make sure that whatever color you choose of the Dixie Belle, it will adhere to what you're painting. I've done the same process in my old building where I was before I came over here. It was a brick, but I used the Dixie Bell paint and it did on the wall and the brick was, it looked like a whole new room. Just by simply using a little bit of the Dixie Bell paint on a stamp on a wall. <laughs> And just to let you guys know, every Tuesday at 11 Eastern Time, I go live on my page. I do call, something called Technique Tuesday, and I'm always doing something different, something new, something unique, something fun. So if you decide you want to go ahead and like my page, you'll be able to see those videos. All right, we're going to do one more. And then we're going to move on. They're asking what you put on the floor after you've stamped it and what you're Oh, that's with. coming next. Good question. I used to be a teacher, so I like to be able to do a project from start to finish. I don't want to start something and tell you to tune in three weeks from now. I want to have it all done for you. So, let's see, well, how much time? Yeah, we're doing good on time. So, so far I did two rows, 
and it's looking way better. How how much better does this look than the, I don't know if you can see this in the screen, but the crappy, oh, I'm sorry, can I say that? Uh, yucky old linoleum. All right, so I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to talk about how you seal it and protect it. Hi, from Sydney, Australia. Wow, hey! Now, if you want to get more of a distressed look than what I'm applying, just put less pressure on your stamp. When I did the brick wall, some areas I would push hard on, and others I go really light. And then you will see a huge difference. Let me take the stamp off. See where I went lighter here? I don't know how close you can see that, but it looks a little bit more distressed. Okay, since I did that one so light, I'm going to do one more heavy next to it. Since I have all this fluff paint here, I might as well use it. Has anybody out there painted the linoleum floor yet? If you have, put a picture in the comments. We'd love to see them. If you haven't yet, and you are deciding to attempt it, do it and then put your picture in the comments. Or send, put them on my page. So. If you can see here, you can see where it's a little bit less, more distressed, and then I went heavier here. It simply all depends on the amount of pressure you put. What's nice though is the Dixie Bell paint just rolls on super smooth, adheres well to the stamp, and ooh. this one moved a little bit. Now, the form won't be perfect, but there's a lot of design going on, so nobody's really going to notice it. And I'm just going to finish up this last one here, and then we're going to move on to sealing. Got viewers from San Augustine, Florida, and Houston, Texas. I'm sure you have heard about gator hide. Gator hide is water repellent. It's easy to apply, it is easy to clean, and it is a very durable top coat. I'm simply going to pour a little bit on a plate because it's easier to apply on a plate. And um, start with a semi damp sponge, which I forgot to do, so I'll hold that thought. <laughs> okay, now I got my, my sponge a little bit damp. So when I was planning this out, I didn't think thoroughly through this because I apologize in advance, but I'm going to have to probably have my rear in the air. <laughs> so you stick your blue sponge in, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to simply apply three thin coats. It's going to go back and forth. I need to put my glasses on because I can't see exactly where 
I have it, so. Now it's okay to do something like this in sections, especially because you don't want to be overwhelmed. Now the Gator High does have a little bit of a breathing, a little bit of a warning on it, so make sure you do it using a well-ventilated area. Need a little bit more out here. Also keep in mind, you don't want to overwork the Gator High because what happens is if you overwork it too much, you'll, you can pull it off. And the best way to know if you've gotten good coverage on your Gator High is to kind of look at it from an angle and see, you can generally see from the sun or the light in the room to make sure. Now if you missed an area, don't go back while it's still wet because what you're going to do is you're going to pull it up and you don't want to do that. So make sure when you're putting your second and third coats on that you get those. Where do you find the stamp again? Oh, the stamp is Iron Orchid Designs. Um, so basically, there you have it. So we've taken a plain old, ugly, dirty, gross linoleum floor, and we've turned it into a beautiful work of art. Um, uh, I don't know if you probably can't see that far over, but we started with how do you slick stick, then we painted the floor, and then we stenciled, and then we sealed the floor. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, if you know anybody who is going to be painting their floor anytime soon, make sure you share this with them. There's some good information on here. Uh, it's so easy to do. It's so You saw how fast I did this little area. Uh, the kitchen's probably about 15 by 15, so I will have it done within a couple days. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will post after pictures I'll put before and after pictures so you can see the huge difference. Um, again, I'm Shannon with Pink and Blue's Vintage. Thank you so much for joining me on the Dixie Bell page. My page is Pick and Boots Vintage. Jump over, give me a like. Um, Tuesdays, I go live every Tuesday at 11 o'clock and I do a technique. And thank you so much. All right, we'll see you next time.